Alright, in our next video we're going to do some more completing the square examples and um, this time we're not going to use it to put a quadratic equation in vertex form but rather we're going to use it to actually solve a quadratic equation. So consider um, this quadratic equation. Suppose we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals to 0. Okay, so this is one that we could certainly easily factor as x plus 2 x plus 3 equals to 0 and then we would set each piece equal to 0 and we would get our solutions of negative 2 and of negative 3 but let's talk about completing the square here a little bit and um, just go through this procedure a couple times and see if we do in fact get the same solutions just like hopefully we should alright so again the idea with completing the square is you rewrite your quadratic equation and you basically group the x terms together okay so I've grouped my x terms together and there's another video I have out there about completing the square and putting quadratic equations into vertex form where you can see a few more examples of this as well um, and now the idea is as follows um, we're gonna take well first off we make sure that the coefficient on the x squared is a 1 which it is and the idea is you take half of this middle term so half of 5 is going to be well 5 halves so you take one half of the number in front of the x which will give us 5 halves and then you square that and that's what you plug back inside of the equation so 5 squared, if you square the top, you'll get 25. If you square the bottom, you'll get 4. And then our plus 6 is still hanging out there. And now you have to be careful because, in this case, if you think about what we've done here, if you get rid of the parentheses on the left side, there's an extra 25 over 4 that wasn't there before. So the idea is since we basically just added 25 over 4 to the left side we're gonna have to add it to the right side as well so there's my extra 25 over 4 that's now there and on the left side the idea is okay well you can now write x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4 as x plus whenever you take one half of the number in front of the x in this case we got five halves that's how the stuff in the parentheses is going to factor down so x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4 is equivalent to x plus five halves squared okay I still have my plus six hanging out and then my 25 over 4 is still hanging out there as well okay so let me rewrite this here so I've got x squared whoops I've got x plus 5 halves squared plus 6 equals 25 over 4 and now at this point what you do when you complete the square you want to get the um, stuff in the parentheses by itself on one side of the equation so I'll do that by subtracting 6 from both sides that'll leave me with x plus 5 halves squared equals 25 over 4 minus 6 and I'm gonna write this as a fraction 6 over 1 because I'm gonna have to get common denominators in order to subtract this so still on the left we have our x plus 5 halves quantity squared I've got 25 over 4 well remember to add and subtract fractions you have to have common denominators so you would need to multiply top and bottom by 4 and that'll give us 24 over 4 so that finally we can write this as x plus 5 halves squared well 25 minus 24 is 1 over 4 alright so we're still not quite there yet but we're getting closer and what we want to do on the left side now is get rid of the square root so the way that you get rid of the square root is to simply take this or excuse me we want to get rid of the square 
which I'm kind of giving it away. The way you get rid of a square is you take the square root of both sides. So x plus 5 halves, quantity, squared. I'm going to take the square root of that, and I'm also going to take the square root of the right side. Remember when you take a square root, though, involving equations, you get plus and minus that as your solution. So don't forget the plus or minus when you do this, or things will change around. Well, if you take the square root of something that's being squared, you just get whatever the original quantity was being squared. So on the left side, I'm going to simply be left with, now, x plus 5 halves. And then on the right, I'm left with positive and negative, square root of 1 fourth. But when you have a fraction under a square root, also recall that you can take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom individually. Well, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 would be 2. So I'll get plus and minus 1 half. And now we can solve this for x. And the plus and minus here is indicating that there's going to be two solutions. So now we take all of this and just turn it into two separate problems to solve. We'll make it x plus 5 halves equals the positive 1 half. And then separately, the other thing we'll have to solve from this is going to be x plus 5 halves equals negative 1 half. OK, well, to get rid of the 5 halves, I would have to subtract it from both sides. So I'm solving this one on the left first. So minus 5 halves. Well, 1 minus 5 is negative 4 over 2. And that gives you your solution of x equaling negative 2. So there's one of our answers we found by factoring. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one. You'll simply subtract 5 halves and get x equals negative 1 half minus 5 halves. Or equivalently, x equals negative 6 over 2. And again, we'll get our solution of x equals negative 3. Okay, so this is the trick of solving um, quadratic equations by completing the square. So let me solve one more of these as well. Again, if you need to see some extra examples of completing the square, um, look for my other video involving completing the square in vertex form. Um, again, make sure you make the distinction, though, that in those problems we're not solving equations. We're simply rewriting a quadratic equation. Um, just to make it look a slightly different way. So suppose in this case I have 2x squared plus 6x. Um, let's make it a nicer number. Let's make it 8x just because I don't want the fractions this time. Um, minus 10 equals 0. So I'm just kind of making these up as I go. We'll see if they have solutions or not. So again you do the same thing. You group your x terms, put those in one set of parentheses, and you could add the 10 over at the beginning, it doesn't really matter, we're not going to do much of anything with it for the time being in any case. Um, on this though you have to be a little more careful because you have to make sure that the number in front of the x squared is a 1. Well there's a 2 in front of there so I'm going to need to factor that out. So I'm going to pull the 2 out, and I'll be left with x squared plus 4x. My minus 10 is still there. Nothing, I'm not doing anything with that. I could factor a 2 out of the 10, but in this case, I don't want to do that. That's not what you want to do with completing the square. And I'm going to do the same trick as before. I'm going to take, I look at the number in front of the x. I take 1 half of that number. So 1 half of 4 is 2. Then I square that number 2, and I plug that back inside. So in this case, well, I'm going to end up with a plus 4. Again, using this idea as before, you have to be a little careful. You couldn't just add 4 to the right side um, and have that be correct. And the reason is, in this problem, we have an extra coefficient in front of the parentheses that wasn't there before. So again, let's multiply this out and compare it to what we would have at the original. So there's already a minus 10 that should be present in the original equation. And if I multiply, I'll get a 2x squared, which is good. I'll get a 2 times 4x, which will give me an 8x. We already said our negative 10 was in there. So if, you're not, if, you, if this doesn't make sense, definitely multiply it out and see. 
you'll get a 2 times a 4, which is a positive 8 term that's not present in the original thing. So really on the left side, even though I put a 4 inside the parentheses, it's equivalent to adding 8 to the left side because of this 2 out front. Well, if I add 8 to the left side, again, I'm going to have to add 8 to the right side. And just like we said before, when you go to factor the stuff in the parentheses, so the 2's out front, and x squared plus 4x plus 4 factors as x plus 2 squared. And again, notice one half of the positive 4 was positive 2. I'm going to do two steps at once here, so 0 plus 8 is 8. I'm going to add my 10 over to the other side. Well, 10 and 8 is going to give us 18. And you could go ahead and take the square root of both sides, but again, kind of the trick is, the best thing in my opinion is to get rid of this coefficient in front of the parentheses. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So if I divide the left by 2 and the right by 2, I'm going to get x plus 2 quantity squared equals 18 over 2, which is 9. And now I'm going to do this square root stuff again. So if I take the square root of the left side, I'm simply going to be left with x plus 2. On the right side, when I take the square root of 9, again remembering to plug in my plus or minus, I'm going to get plus or minus 3. And again, this gives us two equations to solve. x plus 2 equals positive 3, and our other solution will be x plus 2 equaling negative 3. Well, the same idea. Now all we have to do on the first equation is simply subtract 2 from both sides. So if you subtract 2 from both sides, you'll simply get x equals 1 as one of your solutions. And if you subtract 2 from the right side, you'll simply get that x equals negative 3 minus 2, or negative 5. And again, there are our two solutions to this particular quadratic equation. I hope this quadratic, um, this completing the square stuff on quadratic equations makes a little sense. Um, again, bear in mind that not all quadratic equations do have two solutions. They'll either have two solutions, one solution that'll be repeated, called a repeated root, or there could be no solutions at all. Um, but those are the only three things that will happen. Completing the square um, and also the quadratic formula, it seems like a tedious procedure, and it is. Um, the two examples I did, I think you could factor out, well we did factor the first one, the second one would factor out also pretty easily. Completing the square and the quadratic formula mainly have their benefits when things don't factor so nicely. So maybe your solutions end up being 1.79 and 2.34. Um, it's probably going to be pretty tricky to factor those unless you're extremely talented. Um, I don't know many people that could just factor something like that off the top of their head. So when things don't factor so nicely, either the quadratic formula or this completing the square stuff tends to come in pretty, um, tends to be pretty useful. Also, completing the square has some other uses. Um, maybe, maybe you're doing the stuff in, in calculus to do integration of uh, partial fractions. So there's definitely other places where you'll end up using completing the square. Um, so it is a defi definitely a little useful algebraic trick just to kind of uh, keep in the back of your mind. So hope this makes some sense, and good luck.